Hello boys and girls, you are very welcome to our kids' church. The story for today is a mixture of a good story and a bad story. Which news do you want first? The good news or the bad news? The good? The bad? Okay, I'll start with the bad news. Jesus left his disciples. Mm-hmm. Jesus ascended to the Father and the disciples were looking at him going up and up and up and that's it. They lost their teacher, they lost their master, they were confused what to do. But here comes the good news. Jesus sent someone in his place to be with disciples, with the Christians throughout the ages, even with us in his place. That's the lesson for today. Enjoy! Happy Sabbath boys and girls. I hope you all had a wonderful week and are well rested because today we are going to be traveling to the book of Acts where we see how God gave the Holy Spirit to the early Christians and we're going to learn from the story how the Holy Spirit gives us power. But before we get started, did you know there are over roughly 6,500 languages that are spoken in the world today? Each and every one of them makes the world a diverse and beautiful place. A person who speaks two languages is known as bilingual, and someone who speaks more than that is known as a polyglot or multilingual. How many languages do you speak? One, two, three, four, five? Can you list all the languages that you speak? No matter how many languages you speak, we all know it's really hard to communicate with someone if you don't speak the same language as them. But in our Bible story today, we're going to see how speaking different languages helped the early Christian church spread the message about Jesus. Let's see what happened and how the Holy Spirit gives us power. Just before today's Bible story, Jesus had died, come back to life, and gone to heaven. 
The early Christians needed to experience God in a new way, so God sent the Holy Spirit. But what is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is the invisible power or influence of God. It says in John 14 verse 26 that He is a helper and will teach us everything and make you remember all that you have been told. It is a special gift from God and God gives this gift to people who are faithful and follow His word. The Holy Spirit gave the early Christians power in a very interesting way. This event happened on the Pentecost, which was a Jewish festival. We will see this in Acts 2 verses 1 to 2. Can you turn your Bibles with me to Acts 2 verses 1 to 2, where it reads, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. How would you react if a big gust of wind blew through the room you were sitting in right now, but the windows and doors were closed and there was no fans on? It would be pretty surprising, wouldn't it? The wind wasn't the only surprising thing that happened, though. Let's all read together Acts 2, verses 3. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and sat upon each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. What would you think if you saw something that looked like fire resting on someone's head? It was definitely not your average church service that day. But there was also one more unusual thing that happened that day. We'll read all about it in Acts 2 verses 4 to 8. Let's all read Acts 2 verses 4 to 8. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these people who are speaking Galilean? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our own native language? The Bible lists 15 different places where people were visiting during the holiday of the Pentecost. People living in those places spoke different languages, but the Holy Spirit gave the early Christian church power to speak all the languages right there and then. The Holy Spirit gives us power, even today. But why do you think the Holy Spirit gave them power right then and there? God wants friendship with people everywhere. God loves everybody who speaks a different language. But as we know and have learned, it'd be really difficult to communicate and spread the love of Jesus with people if you don't speak the same language as them. That's why God gave the early Christian church the power and ability to speak in different languages and spread the love of Jesus. We should take from this and spread the good news of Jesus Christ in every language we know how. The early Christian church was given such a special gift from God in such a special way, but did you know that the Holy Spirit still gives us power even today, all you have to do is just ask. All you have to do is just ask the Holy Spirit for help and he will give you power to overcome anything or to help you through anything. Good afternoon, Jimton. Uh, today we're going to do an object lesson entitled Power Illuminated. And for this, uh, we need uh, bat two batteries and a string of mini lead so as you can see Jimton without the battery if you were if you are going to uh, turn turn on the uh, power button there's no there's no light right and so we're going to put the two batteries here And then we'll, you try to turn it on, Jimton. Turn on the power button. Okay. And now we have light. Light. So our batteries had power to make the bulbs light up. And similarly, the Holy Spirit has power to show us who Jesus is. 
The Holy Spirit also gives us power to share Jesus' light and love with others. He invites us to be part of the process of sharing Jesus. Let's explore what it looks like when the Holy Spirit's power flows through us to illuminate Jesus. Now, how is the power from the battery like the power from the Holy Spirit? And how does it feel to know that the Holy Spirit's power can flow through you? Power from the Holy Spirit can flow through us to share Jesus' love and light with others. Okay. And so like the copper wire was powerless on its like the copper uh, wire or the mini lead lights wire was powerless on its own. We need the Holy Spirit's power to share Jesus with others. We can do it alone. So when has the Holy Spirit given you power to share with Jesus with others? The Holy Spirit gives us power. When we're connected to the Holy Spirit, we have power to help see people Jesus to help people see Jesus in their everyday lives. So that's it. So we have to ask daily then God for the Holy Spirit to give us power. Because as you have said, when we're connected to the Holy Spirit, we have the power to help people see Jesus in their everyday lives. Thank you, Jim Ton. Today's Bible story comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. After Jesus died, he came back to life. <laughs> I'm Jesus. And we're disciples! Jesus spent some time with his disciples. Just before he went back to heaven, he said, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Then, Jesus rose up in the crowd! After that, the disciples were waiting for the Holy Spirit Jesus had promised. They waited, and waited, and waited. <laughs> Finally, there was a holiday called Pentecost that celebrates fall harvest. When Pentecost came, all the Christians were gathered together. like tongues of fire rested on them. Everyone was filled with the Holy Spirit and could speak languages they never knew. Konnichiwa. Salam. Bajo. Jombo. Hola. There were people from a lot of other countries who heard all the noise. They were amazed because the Christians were speaking their languages. Because the Holy Spirit gave the Christians power, people from all kinds of countries were able to hear all about Jesus. Jesus loves me. 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 The Holy Spirit gives power! Yay! Hi everyone. Happy Sabbath. How are you? Myself and Rebecca today are going to talk a little bit of the Holy Spirit. Now, tell 
me one thing. Do you have um, a light in your room? Do you have a small appliance in your kitchen like a kettle, for example? I have one. I'll show you my one. This is my kettle. Now, <clears throat> this is very handy in the kitchen because when I cook, I always use the hot water and I always put a boiling in the kettle. Let's see if we can do it now. Something is not right. I don't think it's working. But this is a piece of equipment. It should be working. I think there's something missing. Rebecca, can you guess why this is not working? It's not quite good and you need to work. He, exactly, you are so clever. It is not plugged in. Look, it is not plugged in. So the energy is not gonna go through this wire into this little appliance and make it work for me. Now let's see if I can make it work if I plug it in. One, two, three. It is working. I have my light on. Amazing. Now, I like to think that we are like these kettles. We must at all times be plugged in. But plugged in with what? With who? Rebecca, do you know? Who must we be always plugged in? Jesus. Yes, Jesus with God. And he has this amazing helper that sends all of the energy we need to put all our little gears inside working to do God's work. Do you know who that is? No. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. Now, I think the Holy Ghost is just like the socket. Do you see this? Doesn't that look like something where you can plug in? Look. Well, it's not going to work on this one. But we don't need that. What I want us to do today is just to draw these three little rectangles on your page and then do some beautiful coloring all around to show all the amazing energy, all the amazing help that God gives us through the Holy Spirit. All right? You are going to need loads of colors because we must make it the most beautiful drawing you'll ever make. And we're going to need a pencil for you to draw your little rectangles. And we're going to need scissors. Now be very careful with the scissors, okay? They can be very, very sharp. So Rebecca, will you do your one? You can draw your little rectangles and I'll be drawing mine as well. Oh, there's a pencil for me. Let me see. <clears throat> one on the top. And then two on the bottom. Now I have two favorite colors. I like green and I like orange. They're my favorite colors. Rebecca, do you have favorite colors? Mm -hmm. What colors are they? I like. I like red and black. Red and black. Oh, they're nice colors. Now, I think that the energy that God sent us would be um, very bright. What do you think? Should it be bright? White and yellow. White and yellow. But they really are the bright colors. You have bright green, bright orange. Well, blue. Bright blue. Peach. Peach as well. Look at that. Oh, I'm starting to have my little holes done over here. All good, good. Will I give you my one and I'll cut yours then? 
just to make it a little bit faster. If you don't know how to use your scissors, it's better to ask an adult to help, okay? Now, would you like to try and cut? Mm -hmm. Yes. Be very careful, okay? And I am going to start with my colouring. Now, at the end of this activity, I am going to stick this paper on my door and I'm going to always remember to ask God <clears throat> in my prayers to send the Holy Spirit to help me through my day, to make the right decisions. Did you know that the Holy Spirit helps you make the right decisions in life? He reminds you that you have to read your Bible, you know, so that you know what God wants you to do. He gives you strength and comfort when you feel sad. He reminds us of the stories of the Bible. When someone was sad, God sent help. When the disciples were sad, God sent help, and it's always the Holy Spirit. When he was baptized, it was through the shape of a dove. When the disciples did not know what to do, they wanted to talk about Jesus. He sent little tongues of fire on top of their heads. Now, I've done a little bit of my coloring already. Can you see my coloring? What do you think? Does this show the energy? I think it does. So as we close, I would like you all to think and meditate in your minds about something that you would like the Holy Spirit to help you with this week. Whether it's something you would like the Holy Spirit to help you overcome or something that you want the Holy Spirit to help you through. As you think about this, I want you to close your eyes and bow your head as we say our closing prayer. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, Thank you for allowing us to come here today, Lord, and thank you for the opportunities that you have given us. But most importantly, Lord, we want to thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, that you give to us each and every day. And we know all we have to do is just ask for it, Lord. So whatever it is that we need help overcoming, Lord, or we need help through, we ask that you send down your Holy Spirit to us, Lord, and that you may give us the power that we need. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen.